Hello, welcome to the Daily Drawing. Today we're going to be drawing a really cool creature called an Aardwolf, I think is how you say it. But they're in the Hyena family and they eat termites and they look really, really cool and I just love them. Uh, they're probably one of my favorite animals right now. All right, so to start with, we're going to do the body shape. So it's kind of a bean. So we're going to start with a frown like this. Just a little bit of a frown shape, especially since it's kind of like walking down this like rocky hill thing. It's definitely curving its body a little bit more downwards. So after we initially draw the frown, then what we're going to do is we're going to draw little parentheses on both sides like this. Just little parentheses shapes. And then of course connect it together. You can connect it with a slight frown, a flat line, or if you want to make it a little bit chubbier or wider, you can connect it with a smile. All right. So here we have our bean shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this over so I have more space. <laughs> is I'm going to go ahead and draw the head. Notice that the head is relatively small. We have a rounded shape right here and then we have a little bit of a muzzle that comes out. So if you look at the size of the head compared to the body, you can fit like one, two, three, about three heads in the body. So make sure you don't draw the head too big because uh, small heads are pretty distinctive of this particular creature. So if you'll notice, they also have relatively long necks as well. So we can see if this is the end of the body right here, then we have about a whole head space before we get to the actual head. So going down from this angle, this in this case, it might be easier to draw the neck first and then draw the head. So if we're gonna draw the neck first, we're just going to go ahead and curve this down, just following that natural curve that it's going in like this. And then from here's the bottom of the body, we just have a sharp diagonal line. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom of the body and just draw a sharp diagonal line like this. And where those two tangents are starting to meet together, that's where I'm going to draw a little bit of an ovally shape or a circly shape to represent where the head's gonna be. All right, so now if you have drawn it this way and if you made the neck like super, super long and it looks a little weird, all you have to do is just scoot that head up a little bit. Or if it looks like really, really short, you can scoot it down a little bit. So it's kind of up to you with uh, how you want to judge how this particular part of your sketch is going. Just make sure that there's at least a little bit of a gap between the neck or between the head and the body. Don't let that touch because they do have longer necks. All right, so now to move on to the next part, I'm going to go ahead and focus mostly on the head. I'm going to come back to the legs and stuff. So I'm going to zoom in here. All right, so something that I see is that they have really massive ears. Um, they do have smallish heads and they have the muzzle coming out. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna start with that muzzle. So if this is the top of the head, I'm gonna go down until we get about a third down from the head. I don't wanna go exactly center because that'll make it look too thin, more like a foxy type thing. So about a third down the head, I'm going to draw a slight diagonal, kind of following that motion that the head is going in that direction. And I don't want to make that too long. They do have relatively long um, muzzles. Their muzzles are about half the length of their head. So if I kind of measure about halfway into the head, that's about how far out the muzzle should stick. So make sure it doesn't go out too far. Otherwise, it's going to look a little strange. All right. Once I get to the tip of the nose area, I'm just going to do a slight parenthesis. Not too big because their noses are very small and pointy because they eat termites and stuff. They have to have a more narrow nose in order to help uh, dig into the holes and stuff. So really small kind of curve. And then we're just going to connect that to the bottom of the head with a slight smile like this. So now that gets me my muzzle shape. Now, if you'll notice right here, we have that eyebrow that kind of almost makes a greater and less than sign. So I wouldn't make that super, super pointy unless you're just going for a style, but I would make that a little bit sharper than keeping it a perfect curve. So I'm gonna change that angle right here to be a little bit sharper, kind of like I'm drawing, like maybe like an L that is a little bit stretched out or curvy. All right, so at this point, I don't need um, the head shape necessarily. I am personally gonna keep it there just because that's where my uh, muzzle, if you'll notice it's black here because I wanna do those markings, I'm gonna leave it so that I can use that for later. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the um, line that's gonna show me where the eye and the ears are gonna go. A good way to draw that line particular area because it's facing from side view is start right here where the muzzle met the uh, eyebrow area and then draw a smile going to the back of the head. If you very lightly, by the way, draw this, that'll tell you that your eye is going to go somewhere in this location where the muzzle meets the head, and then your ear is going to go from the back and up in this direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here where my uh, line kind of stopped and it met the head. I'm gonna start my ear here with a slight parenthesis like this. I wanna make sure that it's long enough that it goes outside of the head and the body. We can see where it kind of breaks that barrier right there and then it comes back down until it reaches across from where we started the ear. So I wanna go across from the ear, that's where I wanna meet it back down to. So after I have my parenthesis for the initial ear, this side is gonna be a little bit flatter, so I'm gonna cap it off with a frown to make it round, and then I'm just gonna connect it back down here 
to where I need to connect it to, which is uh, once again across from the other side. Now, after I do that, if you want to erase whatever's on the inside of the ear area, you can. That way it makes it a little bit cleaner and easier to work with. They do have um, like an inner ear, so if you want to draw kind of like a little shape to indicate the inner ear, it's just basically drawing the same shape that you just drew. If you want to be more detailed with it, you can, but it's up to you how much detail you want to put into it. And I noticed that it kind of curves in a little bit right here, so it almost makes a teardrop shape on the inside of the ear, so that's what I'm going to draw because that's what I see. If you want to make it a different shape, definitely feel free to. All right, so now that I have this ear drawn, I'm gonna go ahead and draw this other ear before I focus on the eye. We can see that it looks like it's growing out of this ear because it's being overlapped. So I'm going to start on this ear. I'm gonna do a slight diagonal line like this, however far out I want my other ear to go. And then I'm just going to go relatively um, in a diagonal line going back to the head, just make sure it's not connecting to the same spot. So I'm just gonna curve that down like so. Now um, I do see a slight crease uh, next to the ear where I guess the um, like ear is kind of folding a little bit. So you don't have to draw that unless you would just like to add an extra detail. All right, so now that I have my ears done, I can go back to my eye. So here I've already put a little uh, marker area where my eye is. Uh, once again, on that eye line that we have drawn here and right next to the muzzle where it meets the head. So if I look at this picture, I can see that the eye is very round. It does have a slight point to the edge because we're seeing it in profile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw kind of like a curvy greater than less than sign and then I'm gonna make a rounded side on the shape a uh, rounded shape on the front so right here I'm just gonna draw a slight frown like this until it touches that eye line and then once it touches the eye line I'm gonna switch it to be a slight smile that way we still get that round look of the greater than less than sign but we get it a little bit cuter cuter <laughs> a little bit cuter all right and then I'm just going to draw another parenthesis on the front of it and as always, I like to add my highlights. So here you can actually see that this one has two highlights, probably reflecting from both the sun and the flash from the uh, photographer's camera. So if you wanted to add two, you totally could. But that's entirely up to you how many you want to add. You can even add like a pupil and iris and all that if you choose to. All right, so I'm pretty much done with the face. Oh, <laughs> the nose, duh. <laughs> all right, so for the nose area, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a parenthesis on the tip like this. And then another small smile on the inside like this. That's all I really see on this nose area. The rest of it's kind of turned, so I don't see like that little inside piece. I just see this particular part. You can kind of see the smile that makes up their mouth, especially that little black part is the corner of their mouth. And it's very, very narrow. So if, if your nose is like mine and it's too narrow to add the mouth, you can also do this to where we're just going to draw a slight line and it should stop before it gets too close to the eye. So right here we can see that it's a little bit uh, diagonal below the eye. So make sure that it doesn't like get all the way up here because that'd be weird. So if, you're no, if your muzzle's really small, just add that line a little darker and then add a tiny, tiny bump so that we add a secondary line here. That's gonna indicate the lower jaw. Just make sure that lower jaw is extremely thin. If you make it too thick, it's gonna look either like uh, some sort of dog or fox. And we wanna try to avoid that because these guys are more in the uh, hyena family. All right, so keeping that pretty narrow and pretty thin. All right, so now we are done with the face and we're going to move on to the body. All right, so here we can see their legs. If we look at the length of their legs, their legs are actually pretty long, but because they're all scrunched up, they appear to be a lot shorter. So I wanna make sure my legs aren't too awfully big. What I would actually suggest doing is go ahead and draw this rock, which notice the rock is very much curving in the same direction the body is. So I'm gonna take this curve right here and then scoot this over here, there we go. I'm gonna take that curve and I'm actually just gonna draw that curve again below the body. That way I can kind of already tell where I want my feet to be placed. So to make sure that's not too far down, but also don't put it so close that it's gonna be like squatting really, really much. All right, so now that I know where I'm gonna stop my feet at, I'm going to go ahead and start on this front leg. Here we can see this is the shoulder area. It goes down to the elbow and then down to the foot. So to start this, here's where my shoulder's at, is where that body met the neck. I'm just going to draw kind of an ovally shape like this. And then after I get that ovally shape, I can see that this paw right here is being uh, lifted up because it's walking forward. Actually, hold on. It's the other paw that's walking forward. That's confusing. <laughs> There's so many stripes and stuff going on. All right, so to make this balance, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that oval. This is the end of the oval, that's the elbow. And I'm just going to draw a diagonal line until it touches the rock. So from the edge of the oval back here, I'm gonna draw a slight diagonal line until it touches the rock. And then once it touches the rock, I'm going to draw the paw. To draw the paw, just go forward a little bit first and then draw a little parenthesis like this. And because it's from side view, I don't see all the toes. I only see, um, 
I only see two actually. So I'm just gonna draw one parenthesis and then I'm gonna start on the previous one and then just draw one more parenthesis and then curve it back towards the foot. Now they do have very slender legs right here, but notice that once it hits that little knob that's their wrist, it gets wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first draw a parallel line going up that's fairly close to this one. And then once I get about halfway up this leg or a little bit lower, I'm just going to draw a slight bump and then come back up to the leg like this. That way that makes it feel as though there's a little bit more muscle there and it gives you a little bit more of the anatomy of that leg. All right, now we can actually see the crease right here forming between the legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a slight crease and then go up and that's going to indicate where the muscle is on that particular leg. And then you can erase the inside pieces right here. And I would suggest erase part of the top of the leg and part of the side of the leg, but don't completely erase that because you do need that for adding like a more detail like the fur and stuff. But you can get rid of this top part because it gets uh, covered by their spines and stuff anyway. All right, so now that we have this one done, and um, if you want to do an extra detail, they do have claws. You don't have to do this, but if you want to do like little claws and stuff, you can. We're, come, we're gonna come back and add the fur because there's a lot, <laughs> but we'll do that in a minute. All right, so if this right here is the neck area, I do see the paw stepping forward. Now I'm gonna exaggerate my picture because this is a little hard to tell what's going on. I'm going to move my paw even further forward. If you want to draw it as it is in the picture, feel free to, or you can draw along with me. All right, so because in the picture it's stepping forward with the other paw, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna scoot up higher up on the neck, and then I'm going to draw a very small diagonal line, and then I'm going to drip it down like this, just a short distance. So just a slight, um, kind of like a greater than less than sign. And then I'm going to draw a parenthesis for the tip of the paw, like this. And then I'm going to draw another parenthesis on the inside that's a little bit shorter like this. So I want to make sure it's not the exact same as the other one. It's a little bit shorter and smaller. All right. Now that I have that, because once again, it's from side view. So you only see about usually two to three. You don't see all four toes. Then I'm going to take this exterior one. I'm going to go up until it gets to the, uh, across from the ankle. And then I'm going to make it get a little bit bigger and then go back up to the body. Whenever we add the fluff and stuff that can help add a little bit more to that foot. Um, something else that I also kind of uh, would imagine that would be there would be the actual paw itself. So I'm going to draw a slight little uh, parenthesis here and fill it in. And then I'm going to draw like little circles on the bottom of its toes. That way it makes it feel like there was a paw there, which I think would look pretty cool in my opinion. All right. Oh, sorry. I was trying to not uh, hiccup. All right. So now that we have the paws in place in the front leg, let's move on to the back leg. So if I look at the size of the back legs, um, they're about the same size as the front legs, maybe just a little bit bigger in the thigh area, but the legs themselves are fairly thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first take the back of the body. I'm just going to take that same parenthesis that we started with. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that parenthesis into an ovally shape like this. You can drop it down a little bit below the body if you would like, because the knees do go a little bit below the body. Just add a little bit of an exaggeration to it. All right, so once you have the shape of the thigh drawn, if you'll look at this here, this is the back of the thigh, and then it curves down, and then once we get to the bottom of the thigh, we're gonna draw a greater than less than sign like this. That's gonna make the ankle. Notice it's kind of a short line here, and then a much longer line once it hits the rock. So from the back of the leg, I'm going to do a slight parenthesis first, just to get it to the, you get to out to the edge of the knee, uh, not knee, what is this? Uh, ankle, there we go. <laughs> draw a little parenthesis until we get to the ankle. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a harsh diagonal line like this until it touches the rock. Or if you feel like your rock is too far down, scoot the rock up. And then all I'm gonna do is the same thing that I did to this foot right here. Draw a slight flat line, draw your parenthesis, and then draw another parenthesis. Then if you want to, you can see like a third toe that kind of sticks out maybe. In this particular picture, I see that third toe, so that's why I'm drawing that. Just uh, typically you wouldn't see the four toes unless it's facing towards you or if its paws rotate in that direction. All right, now on this one, we don't have to worry about doing like a knob. This one, it stays relatively smooth and then it just naturally goes up to the kneecap area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a slight diagonal line following the same line that we drew before until I get across from the ankle or get close to the ankle. And then as soon as I get closer across from the ankle, I'm gonna change it to a parenthesis going the opposite direction until it touches the knee. Once it touches the knee, that's gonna form that back leg. And here we can kind of see that stripe kind of makes the interior of the thigh kind of dip in. So all I'm gonna to do to finish up this leg is I'm gonna add a slight smile or a slight parenthesis to the top of the thigh like this, and then erase that part and erase the top. And of course you can also erase the bottom part down here as well. 
So that gets me my uh, back leg. I don't see the other back leg very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to mimic, like if this is the belly-ish area, I'm just gonna mimic that same kind of shape, except because the foot's on the other side of the rock, I don't really see it. So I'm just gonna stop it here. And then I'm going to make for sure that my rock looks as though it is uh, hiding that other foot. Now, if you wanna do what I did on this leg and move it to a different location, you definitely can. Just remember, uh, make sure that the foot is not the exact same width down here. You could draw the foot back here. For example, if you wanted to take this leg and scoot it forward just a tiny bit, you could draw the other foot back here on the very edge of the rock, like this. And then you could curve that up just a little bit so that we can see a little bit more of that foot. So. Um, this is any time that you're using a reference, never feel like you have to follow it exactly unless you're going for like hyperrealism. You can always edit it and change it so that it matches more of what you're going for or what you want it to look like. All right, so now that I've got done with my legs, the only thing I have left before fur is the tail. And all it is is it's just going to take the back of the spine and we're just going to stretch it down however far down you want the tail to go. So I'm just going to take this, stretch it down. If you're doing it to where it's a little bit more realistic, it shouldn't go any further than what the feet go. So I'm just gonna curve it down. Mine's gonna go off the page a little bit. And then all you do is uh, notice that it doesn't touch on the same, <laughs> well, you can't see it. Notice that it does not touch on the same spot. It's a lot further down. So I'm just gonna go further down on the thigh and then I'm gonna do another curve. So further down on the thigh like this. And then I'm just gonna do another like smile until it gets to the end. And then I'm just gonna cap it off with a little smile. All right, so they look very much like foxes in my opinion, which I think look pretty cool. They almost have the same anatomy as like an Arctic fox or something. All right, so now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the fluff. So some things that I wanna point out before we start that though, they actually have uh, quills on the back of their necks. So you can kind of see them right here. They actually stand up like mohawks. So if you want yours to stand up like a mohawk, these things go straight up and they look super, super cool and I love them. But yeah, so if you want to change the direction of these quins on the top of it, you can. And also these quins go all the way down their backs and all the way down to the tip of their tail. So if you wanted to make it look as though it's really, really alert, you could have just like a massive fluffy spike like a stegosaurus all along its back if you choose to. If not, you can just go along with me and we're just going to stick with what we see here. All right, so the first place that I would strongly suggest adding a lot of um, kind of spikiness to is the back and also to the backs of the legs, the belly, and the tail. You don't have to add a lot to the face because the face is relatively smooth, but definitely on those other parts. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be uh, doing the Z line, which as always, it's just kind of like a zigzag line that you add slight variations to where you're adding some little bit of curves, not a scribbly line. Um, it kind of like if you're doing V's or W's, but you're adding a slight bend and curve to them is all we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna start right here where the ear meets the neck. I'm going to kind of do a very long Z line. And notice that I'm kind of like making it go to a point each time. And that can really, really benefit it. You could also add some stray hairs to where you just draw a single line going up that does not go to a point and that can add some good variation in your texture. So don't feel like you have to stick to the Z line exactly. Just kind of go at your own pace and kind of go into your own kind of flow to it. That way you're satisfied with what you have. All right, so since I'm doing mine, it's kind of more of a uh, chill kind of art uh, wolf guy. I'm not gonna make my spine stick up too much. But once again, if you wanna make them really, really spiky, feel free to. I'm just gonna add some more texture just by going in and adding a couple more Zs and a couple more just stray lines. Don't go too crazy, otherwise it's gonna look more like a really spiky kind of like hair, and I'm gonna try to avoid that. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way down the tail. I'm gonna add that same texture on the outer part of their tail because their tails are very, very bushy. So I'm gonna take that entire tail line that I drew, I'm gonna add a bunch of those kind of spiky textures all along the tail. You can also add some on the inside of the tail if you want to. Be careful not to add too many, otherwise it's gonna look more like a horse's tail, which would be like solid like hair, which we don't want that to uh, look like that. So be careful not to add too many textures unless you're going for like hyperrealism. All right, so here we can see that there is some texture on the back of the thigh, a lot of really long kind of fur. So I'm gonna add some of that long fur texture on the back of the thigh, like this. And uh, by the way, if you want to, you can, like if I'm gonna add the texture on the belly, you can lightly erase your line first and then add the texture. That way you don't have to worry about there being an extra line in your way if those extra lines bother you because uh, some people don't like those. I don't really mind them, but um, if they do bother you, feel free to erase them first. That way you don't have to go back and uh, redraw different things. All right, so I got the back of the leg. I got the belly. I do want the back of this leg as well. So I'm just going to lightly erase, add some fluffs, 
do, 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 do. And a good general rule of thumb, if you don't know what direction the fluff goes, um, you can always use a reference, of course, but if you don't have a reference, um, it's usually going to go away from the uh, particular part that you're drawing. So here I'm going away from the leg in this direction. Here I'm going away from the body, and this is away from the tail. So that's usually, not always, but that's usually where it's going to start going from. Oh, uh, by the way, on this leg, if you'll notice where we drew that little bump, the long fur kind of stops after the bump. So the, the actual tips of their paws are pretty smooth. So make sure that you don't take that fur too far down. Same thing that I did back here. So it stayed fluffy until we got to like the actual leg leg parts and then I kind of stopped. All right, so a little bit of fluff here. Do, 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 do. And definitely kind of some more fluff on their neck would look pretty good. Do, 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 do. Just, I love, I love drawing fluffy things. I don't know if that's like super obvious at this point. But yeah, so I'm just gonna add some more fluffs in some other areas. So you can make yours as fluffy as you want, or you can make it as smooth as you want. I am going to add a little bit of fluff on the cheek, but because the fur is so short, I'm gonna use a hatch line. Hatch line is just where you're using really short, kind of like little diagonal lines, just to show that that fur is a lot shorter in that particular area. And then I'm gonna add some hatch lines to kind of draw that little black kind of face mask going on that the guy has on his face here. Yes, there we go, okay. So at this point, if you wanted to call your uh, Ardwolf done, you can. If you want to go ahead and continue drawing with me to add just a couple more textures and shading, then definitely feel free to. So some things that I definitely see that I want to add more to is adding a little bit more texture to the quins. So here I'm going to be using a little bit of a combination of the Z line and just drawing stray hairs in the direction that the uh, spikes would be going, which once again is usually away from the body or away from that particular area. So here I'm adding just a couple on those really, really spiky areas, a few more on the tail, a little bit more on the actual legs themselves, especially in the parts that have that longer fur. And of course, in like the parts that have a little bit more shading to it. And also adding just a little bit more to the face areas. And uh, if you want to add like some uh, lines and stuff, because uh, if you notice that this guy, he does have like zebra-y looking stripes going on, which I think looks so aesthetically pleasing. So if you wanted to draw little hatchy lines to kind of indicate the direction of those kind of zebra spikes, then you can do something kind of similar to this. Now, the reason that I'm doing a, a hatchy line or kind of like a squiggly line instead of a smooth line is that because they have fur making up those patterns, the, that fur pattern is going to break it up and not make it perfectly smooth. Like if we zoom in here, we can see that the fur pattern is textured and not smooth because of the length of the fur that is um, on the animal's body. So I'm just doing a little bitty wiggly lines to indicate where those are. And you don't have to draw the same number of spikes as, or not spikes, you don't have to draw the same number of stripes that are on the picture. You can add your own stripes. Uh, you can even make them more tigery if you want, or you can make them non-stripes. It's kind of up to you what you wanna do with your particular creature. So I'm just gonna take away some of these stripes just to save a little bit on time. Uh, I really do, one of my favorite things about them is they have like little black feet. I think that looks so cute and adorable. And I, I, just, I just love whenever animals have really good contrast and their fur that looks really cool. Uh, by the way, if you did draw their uh, mohawks, their mohawks have stripes, <laughs> which looks so cool. So if you drew like the mohawk thing, their mohawks are gonna have stripes going all the way through their mohawk, kind of like this. So if you wanted to add that, totally feel free to. But anyway, okay, so I'm done with the initial drawing. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and shade. Um, typically, whenever I have an animal that has colored fur, I usually shade the darker fur areas first, and then I go back and add just little hints of shading um, uh, like where the actual shadows aren't touching and stuff. That just kind of helps me as the uh, drawer person figure out how to, or like which areas I need to make stand out more. And that way the shadow doesn't overwhelm the patterns on the animal. Cause it, my most important thing at this stage is I want to show off the patterns and designs on the animal more than I want to show off like shading skills and stuff because I'm focused on doing a study of the animal, not really worried about practicing my shading stuff. So it's kind of up to you if you wanna focus more on that. But um, that's just what I'm personally doing is focusing more on the actual animal itself. All right, so they have stripes on their tail. Oh, they have like a big black tip on their tail. My dog, Teddy, he's a Pomeranian. He has a, a tiny black part on the back of his tail. And it's like, it's always hidden because he always has a tail up, but it looks super, super cute. And I'm always like, you just have like a little hidden dark side to you, don't you buddy? And it's adorable and I love him. But anyway, all right. So there's all of my little uh, parts that I wanted to have the stripes and stuff too. So I'm just gonna go back and add a little bit of shading just to kind of really separate out those legs and stuff, especially down here. I want that leg to look further back. So I'm gonna darken the parts that would be black on the actual animal. And then I'm going to do 
a little bit more contrast. Contrast is where you have a dark area right next to a really, really light area. And adding a good variety of contrast to your artwork can really make it pop and make it seem like more lifelike and more believable, which I think looks really, really nice. All right. So I'm just going to go and stop it there. I don't want to overwhelm it, but I'm pretty proud of it. And this is uh, such a cute creature. Um, I really love their, like, just, they look so amazing. Like, they look like they're designed by, like, I don't know, like a gamer or something. Um, I think Ard Wolf. I think that's how you spell it. Don't quote me. I'll have it in the description or whatever. But yeah. All right. So I hope you guys had fun and I would love to see your creations. Have a good day. Bye.